Good morning. Hope all is well. Praying that everybody day has been blessed so far. Today is another day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. No matter what may come our way, we have to know that the Lord is still good. Amen. So let that penetrate your heart. No matter what circumstance or opposition you may be facing, God is still good and he preserved you in the days of crisis. Amen. So just know that the Lord has sent me to tell you on this day that in the blink of an eye, your life is going to change. In the blink of an eye, your situation is going to change. Trouble do not last always. Amen. Well, before I get started, let me say a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for joy and peace. Thank you, Lord God, for your anointing. Thank you, Lord God, for always showing up, Lord God, and delivering us from whatever it is that we may be battling with. But Father, I ask that you forgive us for anything that we have done, Lord God, that was displeasing to you and in your sight, oh God. And Father, we ask that you continue to, Lord God, shape us and mold us and continue to, you know, do your will for our life. May we, Lord God, listen to your voice, hearken to your voice through all things well lord god if there's anybody dealing with any sickness or disease lord god i ask that you deliver them right now and heal them right now in the name of jesus lord god restore our trust to you lord god our trust in you so that we can have the faith that we need to move lord god through these open doors and our new lord god positions in life that you're giving to us thank you for the shifting that's happening lord god on our behalf lord god to make things work out for our good we thank you lord god for remaining faithful but lord god we uh come to you with all supplications and prayer and and honesty lord god and integrity may we make our requests made known unto you lord god because we know that you are a just father and you will give us what it is that we need and what we desire god because your words that you will give us the desires of our heart and you have not withheld the request of our lips so god we trust in you on this day and i decree and declare that's done the lord said um this is a teachable moment for us to so do not give the enemy credit for what he's doing uh the pressure that's upon you is to produce fruit is to produce your uh, purpose is moving you into your purpose he said that god is switching things up so that you can be better amen he uh that pushes you into your purpose that pushes to push you in your purpose you cannot tell god you don't want to do this no more you cannot try to give up because god said the calling that he's uh that's on your life is irrevocable you cannot undo what he's calling you to do amen so you have to just keep going and anything that god has promised you you have to stand on it keep it in your mind what god promised you no matter what you may face amen because god said that um if you can hold it in your head, you can hold it in your hand. Amen. He said that you are victorious in Jesus name. He says to look back over your life, all the tough situations and the bad things that you ever went through produced fruit. Amen. He said that thank him for where you are right now because you're not the same person who you used to be. Amen. He said you had to be tested. Amen. Because he's putting you in a leadership position. So thank God for where you at. He says to stand on your integrity, you have to be honest in all situations. All situations know that where you're going, you have to be honest to yourself and honest with God and honest in whatever work that you're going to be doing. He said because the enemy will sin the very thing that you're anxious for the very thing that you feel like you're in desperate need of the enemy will send it but you have to stand on your integrity and learn how to say no and reject some things get down to the bottom of it well you all let me tell you how he ended up you know giving me this word um I, like i told y'all i got terminated from my job the other day but what it was i received a check in the mail for my insurance company it was the exact same amount that you know i paid for my car insurance every month so i had i was questioning that in a way i'm like did they kick me off the policy or something so i called them and i was like hey y'all sent me a check um i was like what is it for and he didn't know uh why did they send me a check and i told him where it was from and stuff so he got on the phone and he called them the corporate office to see why they sent me a check yes they sent me a check and yes they sent other people checks but he said it was a glitch in the system and so that they, they sent checks out i was the only one called and was honest about the check the other people had already cashed their checks and did whatever they wanted to do with the check so me being honest with it it helped them out and also helped myself out because them other people that cashed them checks probably finna get sued or something like that were probably gonna have to pay it back or they the policy probably was gonna get canceled or something like that so you're gonna have to be honest and know that the enemy will send what you need when you need it but just know it's only temporary the enemy will send you something temporary and that you're gonna have some loss behind it 
and it's going to lead to, you know, some type of trouble. But when God blesses you with something, when God sent it, it leads for a lifetime. It, it, it be there for a lifetime. It lasts for a lifetime and leads to goodness. Amen. So God said he's bringing you to a place of majesty and splendor. So you cannot be dishonest in nothing that you do. You have to, you know, be honest about everything. And so he had me reading in the book of Esther. He took me to the book of Esther. Someone is about to get married, but as i was reading i was just trying to jot down notes as i was going and it's uh it says that all wives should honor their husbands so if you're a husband and, and your wife is not honoring you you have to question if that's the white that god ordained for you amen but anyways know that when you get into your marriage you have to honor your husband whether he great or whether he's a small man he he don't have a good name he don't make that kind of money you still have to honor your husband no matter what amen no matter what his status is honor him says the lord and it says that every man should be master of his own home. I don't care if you have make more money than that man. You cannot control that household. I don't care if that man make more money than you and he allow you to run the household. You're not supposed to do that. A man's supposed to be a leader. He's supposed to lead his home. He's supposed to be master of his own home. And it says that um, women don't rule over men never no way no how that is not how that's supposed to happen and it is some masculine women to where they feel like they're supposed to you know make decisions and boss their husband around that is not how that's supposed to go and that's bible amen it says so ask god to anoint you to play your woman role and to play your wife role amen we have to ask god for this type of anointing where he already anointed you in the way you already a wife it just gotta the time gotta come it's, it's a time thing amen but those are things that god wanted me to focus on you know under your husband no matter if he's great or small men supposed to rule the household be master of his own house and um yeah a woman don't rule the house amen and it says that uh hadesa god had me to focus on hadesa even though that was esther name before she was esther let me tell you what that means it means prosperity it represents god's blessings and abundance and that anointing was attached to Esther before, you know, before her name changed. And it still is attached to her. It was just like a different season. But those things are still attached to Esther, even though her name is Esther, which Esther means star. So God said he's put, putting you in position, in a leadership position. You're going to be shining. You're a shining star. You are victorious. You're going to be prosperous. You have the Lord's blessings. And you will be living in abundance, thus says the Lord. He says you're walking into prosperity. You're walking into God's blessings in god's abundance god's favor amen so esther name changed in that uh the, the things that it changed was still attached to her amen god just anointed her with more amen anointed her to be a shining star anointed her for the position that was she was about to play the role that she was in amen anyways it says when god favor is on your life you have favor from man as well so not only will you receive god favor you're gonna have favor with men in whatever position you was in it says that the seasons you have been going through was only seasons to prepare you for where you're headed amen for where you're going to amen it's seasons of preparations amen it says you had to be tested in certain areas of your life the lord had to know do you still gossip and back by the lord had to know which are you honest do you have integrity the lord had to know can you uh independently make uh decisions man or woman you have to know you know are you a man or woman of discretion he had to know do you have leadership skills can you discern and judge and be merciful and kind while you're doing it he had to know that um if a situation uh, you was in a heated situation how would you respond are you resilient god had to test you on these things and congratulations you passed that test amen that's why one door closed and he opened up another one amen so he says congratulations on that amen and he says that the mar the person who was about to get married, the Lord says to keep yourself up. Your spouse has already been watching you. They know what you look like on your down days. They know what you look like on your most beautiful and handsomest days. They've been watching. Whoever it is, already been watching you. Amen. He says even after you get married, to keep yourself up. And he says when you get into this marriage, don't be a greedy person. Just because your spouse tells you you can have whatever you like. He said don't go to racking up on all of this stuff. Don't, don't go racking up all all that stuff and then just depending on that woman or that man to do everything for you no don't do that don't do that just because they get it don't do it, it ain't tricking if you get it it ain't gonna be no tricking because they you're gonna end up making them broke amen and they're gonna hate you from the inside out anyways uh the lord <laughs>
Uh, no, they not. I'm just playing. That's just that's, that's our nether playing too much. But anyways, um, Esther at the time how uh, the Lord gave me that word, I noticed how Esther when it was her time to go into the king, Esther didn't rack up on all of this stuff like the other virgins did. Even though they told them, hey, you can have whatever you like to take in there with you to the king. Esther only took what was advised to her from the servant. Amen. So she only took a little bit of nothing in there to do what it is that she needs to get done. Amen. With the king. But anyways, by her doing that, she gained favor and grace. Not only by through the king, but also God and also the people who was watching what she was doing. Amen. So you can't be a greedy person going into this um, position in Jesus' name. So you're going to obtain favor from God, man, and man in Jesus' name. It says that, um, oh, God had me to focus on when Esther got crowned king, she got, uh, well, I mean queen. Oh my God. She got crowned queen during the month of Tibet. And I automatically assumed that it was October because they said in the 10 month, but God had me to go look up the month of Tibet. And in the Jewish calendar, it meant January. So whoever it is, you get married in January. Amen. And that just, you mark that month. I don't know what day, but you mark that month. January, someone will be getting married. And also, as I kept reading and it led me to the part to where Mordecai, you know, wasn't paying homage to Haman. He wasn't bowing down to Haman. And the other servant was looking and like, hey, you need to forewarn him. Like, you need to do this because this is law. And Mordecai still wouldn't do it because it was against his religion. And so God saying, just because you Christian or whatever religion, oh my God, whatever religion you in, it's going to be tested to see what you stand on, what you know, what you still remain a Christian during tough times when, t you know, times get heated. Are you still going to, you know, stand on that you're a Christian and what your religion beliefs are? So you're going to be tested in the service. No, that was wrong. They was, they was keeping up stuff going to go to Haman. They the one went to Haman and was like, test him and see if he going to stand on. With. That's why uh, Mordecai had to go through all that stuff. They're trying to see what he going to stand on. So you're going to be putting in, you know, some crisis to make sure you're going to and if you believe God, believe God. You're going you're gonna to get tested on it. Amen. So when things start shaking up in your life, it's only a test to see if you're going to stand on your Christianity, on your belief, on your faith. Amen. God says when he placed you in positions, there's going to be some things you're going to have to keep quiet about. You're going to have to be quiet about some things. You can't tell everybody uh, what the Lord is showing you and what the Lord is, you know, giving you 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 is a secret agent for the lord amen he says you are agent so you're gonna have to keep quiet and the lord has already trained you to hear his voice so you when god tell you something you don't need to go get a second or third opinion because god has already trained your voice in those seasons of isolation when you lost family and friends when you was misunderstood when you was rejected god said he quieted all other voice and he trained you to hear his voice in those moments amen so you're gonna have to fast and pray the entire time that you are in this position and fasting and praying shouldn't be no thing to you amen because one when you pray you make your request made known to god and what he showed me was the part when esther you know went in to see the king or whatever and she, after haman was coming against mordecai uh esther needs to go talk to the king and she, the king told her up to half of the kingdom so therefore the lord said request what it is that you want and need to be successful in that job and to be successful in your life god said make your request made known and the prayer will be manifested in jesus name and then he led me to uh esther 4 16 i'm gonna read this directly at the bible it says that um go gather all the jews who are at president station and fast for me neither eat nor drink for three days or nights day or night my maidens and i will fast likewise and so I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Look, y'all know it was against the law for Esther to go before the king before her time. And that's why she said, if I perish, I perish. So, you know, Esther had to be a little scared, you know, to go before the king. But also Esther had to trust God, trust that God was going to, uh, you know, um, answer her request or whatever. And God saying this position is going to scare you, but you still have to move into it. Amen. He said, if you're scared, 
walk into his gate and you have to trust God. Self-denial is never easy, but we have to trust that God will provide whatever it is needs, whatever we need, because God never fails his children. Amen. So you have to have the fear of the Lord. Amen. And you have to do what God will is for you in that moment. We have to do God will for our life. And it's God will that you be in a position of leadership and whatever it is, your ministry or either on the job, God is moving you into leadership and you have to take the role. Amen. You have to do it. Ain't no saying I don't want to do this. Amen. You have to do it. You have to stand on your integrity. You have to be honest and you have to respect authority figures because I don't care if the person is younger than you, your age, you have to learn to respect authority figures. Even though you are moving into a position of authority yourself, you're going to learn, you have to learn to reciprocate that same respect. Amen. And do what it is that the Lord is expecting you to do. And know to, you know, make just decisions and just depend on God for everything. Fast and pray and give it all to God because the Lord is saying these things are going to happen in the blink of an eye. Well, you all, I pray that this word helped you. I pray that this word added to you. Remember that the Lord loves you and so do I. God bless.